Greetings! Hello? Hola? Uh, uh, konnichiwa? Hello. And my ponytails, my pigtails are like all over the place today, so forgive me. Uh, but this video has been requested in a couple of groups that I'm in on the internet. So I decided to put together one video um, less than 15, 20, 30, 40 minutes to show the basics of how to work with resin. Uh, resin is not the only medium that I work with, but it is one that I work with pretty regularly. So we'll go ahead and get started. Hopefully you are having a amazing, amazing day. My my day is going amazing so let's get started I have everything that I need so we'll start with the resin okay when it comes to choosing a resin my suggestion is always to do your research there are a thousand different types of resins and new companies are popping up every other day with resins and epoxy uh, because that's all the rage right now so when it comes to choosing one it has to be within your budget because some of them can be three four hundred dollars just depending on how much you need um, and if you do a counter cop, uh, a counter cop, a countertop epoxy um, some of those can be three four five hundred dollars so my first suggestion would be to start with something that is in the 20 to 30 dollar range uh, get maybe a quart of something and start there I started with famo wood i've used famo wood and i've used park parkland and both of those have done you know really really well for what i needed them for which is embedding and um i make trays and, and different art pieces for the wall um for my own home and for clients so now i am trying to change things up a little bit i'm totally comfortable with the famo wood and the parkland but I wanted to try Total Boat. I've seen a lot of videos on Total Boat and it sounds like it's a pretty good resin um, or epoxy. I also um, got a coupon code for it. So it was like, okay, if I can save, you know, $13, $14 to try it out, it's even better. So I'll link to the video where I got the code from so you guys can check out her video and her content is amazing. So you'll be pleased. So as you can see, the first thing that you need is your resin. Um, like I said, I would start with something more simple like um, a glaze coat. So I would do Femo Wood or I would do a Parkland. And I think Parkland does um, is sold at Home Depot or like your local hardware store. Or you can get it on Amazon. Amazon sells everything. And that ponytail is just flying away. Let's go ahead and just twist that. And one will be twisted and one won't. Okay. Yeah, so I'll have one down and a knot on that side okay so your resin i suggest going with family wood at your local hardware store in the u.s um they sell it at home depot or you can purchase it on amazon so that is the first thing that you need is your resin uh second thing is silicone is that there we go silicone mold release uh, most resin artists or you know amateurs just people that deal with resin excuse me a lot of us use um, silicone molds so it, most of the time the silicone mold your resin is not going to stick to the mold but it's always good to have a mold release just to be on the safe side so whatever your mold is if it's silicone you just spray that and it helps to release your resin project now on to safety things and that's really what i should have done first you are going to want to have some paper towels napkins um a rag something to clean up messes because resin is it's a hardcore glue basically and it is no joke so if it spills on anything that it's not supposed to be on and you let it cure or set um, i'll also talk about terminology curing of the resin is the chemical reaction that happens and as it happens the hardener basically takes over the liquid part so you have a part a and you have a part b part b is your hardener part a is your catalyst 
I think that's the word. It's your catalyst. Once it cures, that means that it is hard to touch, it is rock solid, and it is good to go. I mean, whatever you put in it is set. It's not going anywhere. So curing means set time as well. So paper towels, just in case you spill something. I have spilled resin on a table. I have spilled resin on my floor. And I wasn't able to get it out of my floor quite yet so make sure you have paper towels for cleanup purposes now with the paper towels you also want to have a garbage bag um, I love these bags even though they're plastic and they're bad for the environment so I try to reuse these until they have holes in them um, but you need a bag for trash I normally just have this sitting on a table next to me so that um, if I have anything that I need to throw away say I make a mess with the resin, I can throw my paper towels in the bag. So you need a garbage bag. Now, as far as a surface is concerned, I use either garbage bags and I am completely out. So I will be running to the dollar store after I make this video because I have a project that I'm working on tonight. Um, garbage bags as a work surface or wax paper as Turn that around, yeah. yeah. Or wax paper as a surface as well. So um, you just lay the garbage bag down or the wax paper to cover your entire work surface. Um, as far as work surfaces, I use a card table. I already had the table, so it really just kind of made sense to um, to not buy a brand new table. I am getting into woodworking, so I am going to make me a table, but I have a huge wood, like huge wood working surface in my basement. And um, I just have to have the table move because it's super heavy. But whatever your work surface is, you know, you don't have to go out and buy a hundred dollar table. Go to Walmart or Amazon and get a card table um, and go from there. If you have a dining room table and you don't mind the possibility of the table getting, you know, messed up by the resin, then you can use your dining room table. Just any flat surface and you want to make sure that it is completely flat. So those are how I cover my work surface. All right. Now the best part are the safety items and the things that you need for the actual resin. Vinyl gloves, like I said, resin is nothing to play with and a lot of artists um, don't use gloves and that's fine. Do I have gloves in here? Yeah. <laughs> Most, uh, I've seen a lot of resin artists that don't use gloves and that's completely, you know, their prerogative, but when resin gets on your hands, it's just nasty. And if you forget to wash it completely off, then you're transferring like resin juice all over everything else. And say you were to go and eat a burger and then you have resin juice on your... So for that reason, when I'm dealing with resin, I wear gloves. You can get gloves from your local dollar store um, or you can order like a huge box off of Amazon and then you would have gloves for the entire year for like 15 bucks. These came from um, the dollars. No, these actually came from the beauty supply store. I had these when I colored my hair last time. So, gloves. Now, when it comes to all of these things are directly related to the resin itself. Okay, so, on to what to mix in. Total Boat was nice enough to send me this uh, mixing container with the package that I purchased of their tabletop epoxy. So I really appreciate them for that. This actually has several measurements on it and I'll put it down and zoom in. As you can see, it has measurements all the way from 2 ounces to 24 ounces. Um, depending on how much you're pouring, this works perfectly. And um, it's, it's a nice size. Whenever you're choosing something to mix your resin in, you want it to be round. You want the walls to be round and the bottom to be round because it's just way easier to stir when it is a round surface compared to if it was square you know you're doing like that and that's not going to mix the resin very well 
So you just need something. A lot of uh, resin artists use silicone jars as well or silicone. What is this? It's not a bucket. What would this be? <laughs> this measuring cup. It's a measuring cup. Yes. <laughs> measuring cup they you can get a silicone measuring cup from amazon or um your local like um baking store or restaurant store or you can order it off of amazon that's what i'm going to do because if you have resin left in here because it's plastic you would need to get the resin out you'd leave your stick in it and after a couple of hours once it's not completely cured but semi hard you just pull this out and all the resin would come out on your stick so that is that next we have what do you stir your resin mix with so you just need sticks um i get these super big sticks <laughs> from um Home Depot, my local hardware store, and they're in the paint department. They're normally used to mix, you know, large amounts of paint. But if I have resin in here, it just, it gives me a distance so that my hand isn't right over the resin. And I can just mix and mix and mix. So you just go to your local hardware store, go to the paint counter, and you ask for a couple of these. And a couple of them last you as many projects as you have. They're really kind of a one-time use unless you clean it off. Uh, once the resin dries on it, though, it's not going to affect a new project. So you just um, you just wipe it off or you let it dry <laughs> and reuse it and it's not going to hurt anything. I also have these sticks and I got this from Total Boat with my resin epoxy package. And it's just a stick. You can also go to Dollar Tree or your local dollar store and get um, popsicle sticks. If you're not pouring, you know, the length of a popsicle stick, then you can easily just use a popsicle stick because every project that you do is not going to be, you know, oh, I have to pour um, 12 ounces or 7 ounces. You know, some of your projects may be 2 or 4 ounces, which is all the way down in there, and that works. <laughs> And last but not least, I have this spoon and it is filled with resin. Um, it is a silicone spoon from my local dollar store, Dollar Tree. Um, it costs a dollar and it is silicone so normally the resin wouldn't stick to it like this. Um, but this has been used for a long time. And I just let it dry, I peel off what I can and then I reuse it. You could also use this to stir. Um, your resin project as well. So you have three options. Uh, one thing I wouldn't suggest is stirring it with your hand. <laughs> oh, I don't know where that came from, but you know, I just want to cover all safety bases. Um, you would not want to stir with your hand or even if your hand is gloved, um, you don't want to really touch the resin while you're mixing it because it has not compounded i think that's the word i'm looking for it has not come together solidified together um to do its thing so you know touching it and all of that i would suggest that um until it's completely cured and last but not least a squeegee and total boat sent me this as well in my package thank you total boat so this is a squeegee um you can get squeegees from probably your local dollar tree or dollar store and you can also get them from your local hardware store home depot has squeegees because they're normally used um for paint to spread out paint and to also um to spread out paint and to spread out cement like small cement jobs as well so you can get that and that will be all so I think that's all for this video, folks. Those are the basics. I just wanted to make a video to get people started. When I started with resin, it was scary, but it wasn't like scary, scary because I was so excited and I knew that if I just took my time and had patience, and that's, you know, one of the other tips I'll put in this video, just have patience. Don't 
see what other artists are doing you know with the the river tables are all the rage right now and they are amazingly beautiful um you don't have to make a river table your first resin project um you could make something smaller uh i am going to be making a video on how to make different moles and how to use moles around the house of things that you already have so stay tuned for that video and on that note I appreciate y'all for watching. I hope I taught you something. I hope you learned something. I hope you were entertained. If you are, you can subscribe to see more content. Hit the notification bell because YouTube has a brand new thing going on where if you don't hit the notification bell, you may not know that I've uploaded a new video. So make sure you do that. Thanks for watching. Have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. And... So I put both of my ponytails in a ponytail so they weren't like wonky. Totally forgot you need something to get rid of air bubbles. So I, you can use a heating gun, you can use a torch, a propane, like you can go as, as high in fire as you want to. But I use regular alcohol, 91% isopropyl fall i think alcohol the alcohol that is white that is sold everywhere it's been around forever so i just after i do my resin piece i just spray this alcohol over the entire surface and the bubbles come to the surface and then they pop um you could also use a and i don't have one um one of the larger lighters they're like about that long and you press the button and the fire is like far from you i'll insert a picture um you can also use that if you don't want to go all out with a like a flaming torch if you're not that comfortable with fire but i find that the alcohol works very well there are a few companies that sell like um air bubble popper for lack of a better term um, where you know it helps the resin to release the bubbles but another tip is when you're stirring your resin make sure to take your time and also make sure you're following the directions of your specific epoxy I don't know how I didn't say that before, but make sure that you have read the directions and that you understand what is going on with the resin that you're getting ready to use. You never want to just kind of jump in because you may ruin something. Like if you're trying to embed something and it's a uh, memorabilia and you put it in resin and don't understand how the specific resin that you chose works, you could damage you know whatever it is that you're trying to embed so um that's the other suggestion just take your time and also you need a timer you need a timer your cell phone because all resins have to be mixed at a certain speed you know which is just slow and steady slow and steady slow and steady um but there's um a time frame as to how long you have to stir it for it to properly mix that varies from resin to resin. Some are three minutes, some are six minutes, some are you have to stir in two different cups and then pour in another cup and stir another six minutes. So just make sure that you understand, you know, what kind of resin you're actually working with um, before you just jump head first because truth be told nobody has money to waste on uh you know on resin as you can see from my previous video I, I lost 16 ounces of resin because I rushed and that's why I'm I'm such an advocate of patience when it comes to doing things um that you are new to uh, products that you are new to because you just you just you just don't know you just <laughs> You don't know. So I just wanted to come back and say that once again. Thanks for watching. I think those are all of my tips. Let me make sure. Yes, if I missed anything, leave it in the comments. I'm more than happy to do a part two follow up to this um, to answer any questions that you guys have. Because I know with resin um, and with just venturing into a new art space, it can be scary. And I want to help you through the scary part of your life. Thanks again.